Good afternoon, Afterward. This is Michael Jordan, Global Missions Pastor uh, here at Mount Pisgah. Um, today we're going to talk about Pastor Steve's message on Sunday, which comes from chapter 9 of the book of John. And it deals with Jesus healing a blind man, and then from that it talks about the, the encounters that this man who's been healed, he has with others and how they react to the healing. Uh, the Pharisees hurled insults at him. Um, they told him he was steeped in, in sin from birth, and they threw him out of the synagogue. But in John 9, 25, the blind man simply says, One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. I'd like to introduce you to my, Doug, my friend, Doug Irving. Uh, he's my uh, friend. He's my brother in Christ. I can tell you he is one of those people I could call any time, day or night, and ask him to pray for me, Amen. and he would, and he has. Um, we've shared some very, very special moments together on the other side of the world in the mission field that will live with us forever. Yes. Um, right before the, the Sunday sermon notes in our Rise devotional, um, Doug wrote... Uh, that devotional, and he made a couple of statements in there that I want to kind of open up. We carry on with our lives and handle all of its challenges on our own. What if we turn things over to Jesus and his compassions? Or do we say, I've got this, and I will only come to you if I need you. Jesus is bigger than the needs that we have. Um, Doug, would you mind kind of sharing with us what you were thinking about in that devotional and some of the other things that you uh, put out there for us to think about? Absolutely. And by the way, thank you for the privilege of being here to share my testimony. I have um, I've been blessed by so many things here at this church and this opportunity to write a devotional for the RISE booklet this uh this Lenten season was one of those privileges that I, I really value. Um, I can tell you that, that the community has lifted me up through my health challenge that I've had. I can tell you that it's the body of believers that make a difference in my life. I can tell you that um, as I have invested in others, I've gotten returns on those investments that are beyond anything I would have ever imagined. I'm grateful for that. I know that as we care for others, we also get blessed. And I can tell you that uh, I know Jesus modeled <laughs> this in, in uh, the way that he walked on this earth. Uh, he showed what it was to give and not expect anything in return. And that's what I was trying to, to bring us to, to understand and to appreciate in my devotion that I wrote is that we're here to invest in others because there's a time, going to come a time, when that investment needs to come back to us and be like Jesus and heal and, and ask for those, those uh, blessings in our lives. Um, one of the things that, that I've also claimed the promise of, and I've mentioned it in my devotion, is I claim the promise that's in the Word, and that's in Psalm 30, verse 2. Amen. I cried out to the Lord, and He healed me. I cried out to the Lord and he healed me. I cry, that's what I've, I've repeated to myself so many times over my last uh, eight months of, of, uh, of my health event. And I'll pause there and, and uh, leave. As I, I, I think we've cried on the phone and, la <laughs> and laughed at the f over the phone as the yeah. story unfolded. Um, we're going to kind of dive in and talk about two of the questions that came from the sermon. Have you ever been healed? <laughs> and the other one is, how is life different post-healing? But first, Doug, I would kind of like for you to back us up and yeah. tell us how your life changed yeah. last June and yeah. what you've been through yeah. during this period. Gosh, Michael, I went in for a routine colonoscopy June the 23rd, 2020, right in the, in the heart of COVID and all, and I think that's important to understand. Yeah. But I, I went in for a routine colonoscopy. The GI doctor located a, a, a mass on my rectal wall. And when he, he reviewed the results of the colonoscopy with me at the bedside when I was coming out from, from the anesthesia, uh, I could tell there was something not right. 
He said, you've got a rectal mass. He said, I've already called the rectal surgeon. A, they will meet with you this afternoon. Um, and I said, so what's the chance it's cancer? And he said, pretty good chance it is. So that changed my life. I did meet my wife and I, um, my bride and all of this, um, met with the colorectal surgeon that afternoon. From there, the medical community came together and said, this is what we're going to do. We need to have um, scans done. We need to have treatments uh, placed. We need to have all the different steps in, in your, to be able to beat this. He said, but I, I, one thing I can tell you, this is a highly curable disease. So when he told me that it was stage four cancer that had moved to my liver as well, it just rocked my world. From there, medical community did, did their things. The church community, my family of believers, did their thing. And together, we, we lifted all this up to God. And Jesus did his part to heal. I, I know in some of our conversations, we've talked about you know, there's general prayers, but also there's very yeah. specific prayers. Yeah. So you're, you're going to talk about this in a yeah. moment, but I remember yeah. specifically there were 21 yes, lesions that's true. on your liver, that's right? That's true. So yeah. um, that's several true. weeks ago, you that's received true. some pretty amazing news, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I did. And, uh, you know I, know, I know that you met with an oncologist and you met with a colorectal surgeon. Mm -hmm. um, can you describe for us how those conversations went? Yeah. And I'll try not to smile too much. <laughs> It, and it's all to God's glory. Um, what I can tell you is that 21 lesions, um, when we first started praying, we were just asking for healing. We had inside here, we had a healing service. During COVID days in August, think about that. During COVID days in August, we had a healing service. It was the service. largest attendance we had <laughs> in any service at Mount Pisgah throughout the summer. <laughs> and, and I don't take credit for that, but I do, take, I do give God all the glory in it. Uh, I can tell you that that service where you'll share in a minute, I think the reference to James, we were anointed with oil. My bride and I were both anointed with oil, and we were prayed over, and we continued to be prayed over for, through that time. And, and it, was at, it was during those days that we lifted up healing re prayer requests, and then we lifted up specific prayer requests for healing which was, God, I'm going to be bold and I'm going to ask for no more than two lesions to be seen the next time we have a scan. And then also that we would not need to have surgery on the rectal mass that was there. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the news that you mentioned, meeting with the colorectal surgeon, eight months to the day after all of this was diagnosed, uh, February the 23rd of this year, the rectal surgeon came in and said, I, don't, I can't explain it, Doug, but the odds of, of healing the liver and also healing the rectal mass were so much stacked against you that it would be done at the same time that I have no explanation for how that happened. Now we know how it happened. Right, we know how it happened. <laughs> but, but that's what, th he said, I've got to go now and consult with other physicians to understand what the next step is going to be in your care. And so that was the news I received, and it was amazing. It was, <laughs> it was amazing. I, I couldn't celebrate more. There's still things to do, but that was the health um, miracle that, that Jesus uh, gave uh, to me. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a story of eight months of, of a lot of yeah. medical attention and, yeah. and prayer. Um, uh, I don't think either one of us can wipe the smile off our face. No. You know, I think you, you even said, he, he sat down and he said, um, Doug, I think you've hit the lottery. Yeah, right? yeah he did, he did, he <laughs> oh. did. He did. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take us back to scripture for a moment. We're going to go into Luke uh, 17, and it's the story of Jesus healing the ten people with leprosy. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Hmm. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, 
when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Hmm. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. So let's jump into the second part of that question, okay? Yeah. And it, it is, um, how is life different yeah. after healing? Yeah, yeah. So the focus initially was only about healing. I just want to be healed. And, and Jesus said, ask me and I will heal you. So I claimed that promise. So initially it was all about being healed. When he did heal me, then the prayer request became, what can I do to bring God glory in this? And I want to be one of the lepers that comes back and says, thank you, Jesus, for healing me. And I want to have doors opened so that I can share the good news of what God's done in my life. Amen. Amen. Um, so Doug, Doug and I share, we, we talk about this every once in a while on mission trips and at other times, a love of Christian music. And we find uh, comfort and inspiration um, from the songs that we're listening at during those uh -huh. times. And I know that you had a particular song that lifted uh -huh. you up that uh -huh. you talked to me about. Would you mind sharing that? I, I don't mind at all. So my, um, my prayer partners took the time to send songs that would encourage me. I received one song that was spot on to what I needed at the time. And, and that, that song was, um, uh, sorry, I need to go to my notes. Um, that, that song was, um, <laughs> isn't that something? See a Victory. So the song was Sea of Victory, and it's, it's by uh, a group, uh, Elevation Worship. The, one of the lyrics in the song was about God doing the battle for me, and that he would see, and we would see a victory in the battle, and, and that song lifted me up. There was one thing that, that also uh, is said in the song, and that is that, the, that what was intended for evil I'm going to use for good. Amen. <laughs> and that, for me, that just gave me such hope. I can use anything in your life, Doug, that you encounter, and, and I'm going to use that for good. And that's, that's what I cling to throughout the, the, uh, the, the trial, the battle that I've been in the last eight months. Um, one of the early on when you called me and said, Mike, I don't know if you've heard yet, but I have some you know, news I need to share with you. Yeah. And um, you told me you expected yeah. to be healed, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, but you also said in, in the middle of that conversation, yeah. I'm going to give glory to God whether it it's his will that I'm yeah. healed or not. Right. Well, right. praise God, you've yeah. been healed. But mm -hmm. I just, you know, that notion of uh, expectant faith yeah. and, and, and giving praise to God no matter what the circumstances. Yeah. Can you share yeah. that? Yeah. The, and it, it goes back to the songs that encouraged me. I kept hearing that over and over and over again as I would go and work out, and I did that daily. I'd go and I'd listen to in my playlist of songs that were, were shared, and, and the, the, you heard it over and over again that God's going to heal. I expect that to happen. And, and oh, by the way, during this trial, all I'm choosing to do is praise him, whatever the outcome is, whatever it is. Um, and I, but I expect that he will be healed. And the last thing that, that I remember was before we got the good news on the 28th of February is that we would, I didn't need to see the, hear the, the scan results because I knew what the results were. Okay. I, I just knew if it's like the centurion that, that goes to Jesus and says, heal my servant. And my servant is back home. I said, not with me, but the servant needs to be healed. Jesus, will you do that? And Jesus said, yes, I will do that. Take me to him. He said, no, I don't need to. You just say the word, and I, and I know that he will be healed, my servant. And I knew that that was the case in, in my life as well. 
Yeah, it, I mean, the, the moments we've had to share, uh, it's our joy and our privilege to be here sharing this with you today, hopefully to kind of sit in on yeah. some of the intimate conversations that we've had. Um, I'm going to close us out with a, a scripture and then we're going to pray us out. But um, you mentioned it briefly. We're in uh, James 5.16. We are told the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. James 5, 13 through 15. If any, any among you in trouble, let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. If any, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. We did that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, and, and because we did that, we also, in the healing service that we had, um, we asked the community that was with us that night to be part of the foundation to our healing prayers. I put it, to, put it in front of the group to say, we're, we've got a kingdom, we're the, we've got the castle, and the castle is, is being protected by prayers. And I asked the people that were in the room that night to be on the wall with me, protecting the castle. And I went to my granddaughter <laughs> and said, so could you, uh, who loves art, could you do me a favor and could you make a picture of, of the castle and us in that kingdom. And she, she did that with, with this, with this. The king and the queen, Kathy, my wife, myself, the community around us are, are protecting the kingdom. And here's the castle, of course. People are on the wall. And, and that's where the, the uh, protection was. We want to keep the evil one out. We want to keep the the community praying always, take the shots and, and then be on the wall with us. And it's like Nehemiah in the Old Testament. Yep. I'm on the wall, I'm doing a good work, I'm not coming down until, until the work is done. And that's what, what I uh, was encouraged to, to um, feel through this health battle. And yeah, James finishes this with, and the prayer offered in faith, yeah will make the sick person well, <laughs> and the Lord will raise them up. We have faith, and it's expectant faith. It, it truly is. And, you know, somebody asked me once, why you and, and why not somebody else? I, I can't answer that. I can answer, though, that, that, that uh, I am grateful for it, and I will sing God's praises through it, and I just pray the doors will be open, th that he can use what was intended for evil for good and that he will open doors for me to be able to share the good news. Amen. We're going to close us in a, a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your, your, your healing grace and mercy. Lord, we thank you that you're there and you hear our prayers. Um, so often we pray when we are in need, but Lord, you hear them and you tell us if you cry out that you will heal us. Lord, give us that expectant faith to know that you have the power to do anything and that you only want good for our, for our lives and that you love those that are your faithful servant. Lord, I pray for this precious brother of mine, for the impact he's had on his family and in our community, and Lord, that uh, you continue to be with him and to use him, knowing that he said right up front, this will be to God's glory, whatever happens. But thank you, Lord for the healing and thank you for the time that's ahead doug and i had many conversations that uh, uh, we know that you're not done with us yet mm -hmm. and there's more to do Amen. we pray this in the name of jesus we look forward to that opportunity to continue to bring this news to the community that you've entrusted us with father and we know that um, that the promises that are in scripture can be realized um, if we just have expectant faith we, we declare that today for those that are hurting. We declare that today for those that are needing healing. 
we declare that today for those that that uh, may not know about a an event that is uh, ahead of them and we just pray that every that we will have the strength to continue to carry on in in mission with you father uh, open doors for us uh, continue to bless this church guide the community guide the pastors thank you for the message that Steve shared this weekend uh, about healing and about John 9 and about the blind man that was healed from birth and and how he declared Jesus did it <laughs> that man did it but help us to be bold to say that it was the Lord that did it and and to declare that uh, as often as we can and it's in Jesus name that I pray and all God's faithful said amen amen <laughs> well Doug thanks for joining us and for, for everybody online thank you for listening in today um, we really love bringing these conversations and, and, uh, and starting more conversations. We hope each one of you has a blessed week. Take care. <laughs>